Let's take a look at free body diagrams here for just a moment. In a previous video, I showed you how you could have static equilibrium for an object sitting on a table or sitting on the ground. But let's look at more than one object. So I'm going to draw a ground here or a tabletop, doesn't really matter. And we'll put an object here. We'll make it a nice big object like that. And then I'll place a smaller object on top. And for this example, let's just say that the uh, two objects are in a state of rest, that there is no net force, so the net force is equal to zero for both objects. And what that means is that there's no acceleration here, that all the forces are balanced. We need to, we need to write two free body diagrams for each of these objects, and I'll call this object A, and I'll call this object B, box A, box B, whatever. So let's draw a free body diagram for each of these boxes. For box A, all we need to do <coughs> is draw a dot to represent the box. We know that there is a weight, which is the gravitational pull of the Earth pulling down on box A. So, since it's smaller than box B, I'll assume that it's less massive, and I'll draw a fairly small arrow here to represent the weight of the Earth on box A, which means that there has to be a normal force of box B pushing up on box A in order to balance that out. And so I'll write this out as normal force of box B on A. Now let's turn to the bottom box, which is box B. Again, I will draw a dot. We'll call this the box, a, box B diagram. Now, <clears throat> I know that though there is gravitational force on it, which means that there's a weight pulling down. Box B, we assumed, is more massive, so the weight of box B is going to be a larger arrow, like so. And so this is the weight of Earth on box B. <clears throat> which means that there is a normal force pointing up to counteract this. However, there's one more force we need to take into account. Box A is on top of box B, which means because they're in contact, there is a contact force. It is a normal force, normal meaning perpendicular to the surface. And we know how big it is because of Newton's third law. You cannot push without being pushed. You cannot pull without being pulled. The normal force of the bo of B on A has to be uh, has to be paired with the normal force of A on B. Newton's third law tells us that if you push on one object, that object pushes on you with the same force but in an opposite direction. Third law pair forces, as we call them, are the same type of force, so normal force and normal force. So the normal force of A on B has to be the same size, so I'll draw it about the same size here. Notice that the arrows are always starting at the dot and then pointing away. So this is the normal force of A on B. Notice that they're both normal force, but I've just switched the indices, B on A, A on B. And notice that they are in two different diagrams. You'll never have a third law pair, that is a pair of forces that are due to Newton's third law, in the same diagram. I'm going to mark these as being a pair by just writing a little x on this one and a little x on that one to show that they correspond to each other. Now I can complete the diagram. The normal force that is pointing up or pushing up on box B has to be equal to the sum of these two forces that are pulling down. So if I add this force to this one, well, I'm going to have to go up about the amount that I have in the weight pulling down, and I'll have to add about this much force equal to the normal force pulling down. So that's gonna be this arrow. It'll be a larger normal force than what box A was experiencing. And so this is the normal force of, we'll call it the table on B. 
So this is how we draw a free body diagram for a static equilibrium situation with more than one object. If we wanted to add objects to this, we would just have to increase the number of diagrams that we're drawing the free body diagrams for.